Hello, how's it going? Tenro here and welcome to a little tutorial for a survival slash starter house that I used on my 1.20 survival world. All of the materials for the house can be seen right here. Now some of these numbers might be just a little bit off, but they should be fairly accurate. This house measures out to be 17 blocks front to back and 25 blocks left to right. It takes up a pretty big area, so make sure you have enough space before getting started. Once you have that spot laid out, go ahead and put down a deep slate tile block. Count out seven blocks to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and on that eighth one, put down another deep slate tile. Do that two more times. And now you have four deep slate tiles, each one separated by seven blocks. From that end one, go ahead and turn 90 degrees and go another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and on the eighth block, put a deep slate tile, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eighth block, deep slate tile. Now, just go ahead and fill in the rest of these little blocks following that same pattern, just like that. From there, go ahead and pick one of these four block long sides to be your front of the house. And when to do that, go ahead and go to the front right of it. I'm gonna do this side right over here and you're gonna put a deep slate tile right in between the two that you already have. Once you have a little grid looking something like this, go ahead and add four deep slate tile above every one that you already have. And now we should have these 13 pillars that are five blocks tall. So from here, I'm gonna start to get the arch supports ready to go. So I'm gonna go to this front left pillar, count up from the bottom, one, two, three, and on the fourth block, we're gonna place a deep slate tile on the two inside corners there. At that same four block height, go ahead and put a deep slate tile brick on all the pillars that you see in the same way that I did right here. Here's a little aerial shot showing what that should look like. Then real quick on this front right one, we're just gonna fill that in right there. Now, on every single one of those blocks that you just placed, we're gonna put two stairs upside down, just like you see here on the bottom and on the front face of that block. With that done, you'll have a little something like this. This section right here is intentionally left open so that the staircase can run up it. And for this front right, we're just gonna ahead and do one little stair under and one little stair under, just like that. Moving on to the deep slate tile slabs, we're going to take these two center posts and place the slabs on the tips of the stairs, going out and connecting to all the outside ones. Go ahead and leave all the outside ones clear and open. We're going to next fill in these three upper areas and two lower with deep slate tile slabs, just like this. Once you're done, it should look a little something like this. I like to leave those edge spaces empty just because it kind of helps to round off the edges. Just gives a little bit more dimension. This front right section right over here is going to be done a little bit differently. Go ahead and find those little stair archways that we started making and connect it all the way up to the rest of the platform. Now if we step back, we're going to see this little center post and the right post. We're going to go right in the middle of that and connect it up there and fill in everything else except for this front right section right here. Just like that. Before we get too far, I should remind you, let's go ahead and put some torches underneath all these posts. I like to put the torches on anything facing the inside or the sides. Except for this little front spot where our stairs will go. I'll leave that empty. Might seem like a little bit of overkill right now, but I promise it's going to be helpful later once we get some farms down here. Moving back upwards, it's time to go ahead and connect all of the deep slate tiles together. Just like you see here, you should have four little blocks sticking off of here. One, two, three, and four. Then you should have this big L shape in the center and a little square off to the left. Now we're we're gonna start building in some flooring. Grabbing our dark oak stairs going up to this little front stairway, I'm gonna go ahead and make a one little wide staircase going up like this. Then I'm gonna go underneath and extrude that out two more blocks to the side, go back around to the front and place in our front facing stairs. Then at the top, we're gonna add one more row on top of the deep slate tile slabs. Using the dark oak slabs, we're gonna fill in this outer deck area like that and then go over to our balcony area over here and fill in this seven by seven. Now you could use full on planks if you'd like, but I like to use the slabs because they have the exact same visual effect while taking up half the resources. Next, I'm going to outline this little L section in just some kind of a disposable block. In this case, I'm going to use dirt just because it's not going to be seen at all and I don't want to waste any kind of good precious blocks. There we go. Now I'm going to go over to the left corner of this balcony and on the very corner block, whatever you used, we're going to count out one two, three, and break out that fourth block. That'll be our door to the balcony. And then same thing from this back corner right here. Go from the corner, go one, two, three, and on the fourth block, break that out. That will be our front door. Now for the flooring here, I wanted to try something new and use these mangrove slabs, a mangrove floor, but if you want to use a different color wood, by all means, go right ahead. I just kind of like how this red looks. It was something new and something I'd never tried before. Once you've got all that filled in, including the little areas for the door there, we're going to go ahead and grab our cherry planks. Again, if you want to use a different color for the walls, by all means, go right ahead. Head, I just wanted to try something new. We're gonna go ahead and cover up all the dirt blocks or whatever disposable blocks that you used. Of course, leave these little doorways open. 
Now that we've got a nice little outline of where this house is going to be, I'm going to grab those deep slate tiles again and go and put it on the outside and inside corner of all of this little rectangle L-shape area. In addition to all the corners, we're going to put one in the middle of the long edges right in here. You can just use that one little central one from the balcony, this little post right here, line up on our back wall, and then go over to the right and line up on our front wall. Just like we did below, we're going to rise this up by four. One, two, three, and four, just like that. Now this next piece will be just a little bit specific. Go ahead and go up to this front edge of the house here. Go to the top of that pillar there, place a block, and on the flip side, place a block. Then we're going to grab our deep slate tile stairs and put some upside down stairs, let's see, facing right there, right to the front. Two, three, four, and five. Should have a little bit of something like that. Go ahead and copy that same pattern to the little front door here and the opposite end over there with those stairs facing down and outwards. Then we're going to fill in the rest of this little outline with just solid deep slate tiles. Just like that. Taking a quick break from the frame, and while the walls are still down, I'm going to use the dark oak fence and just kind of make a line going up these columns, all underneath that framing that we just made. Like this, it should kind of be following that little outline that we just made a second ago, like you see here. Next up, go ahead and take your cherry planks, or whatever you're going to be using for your walls, and any place that you have either fence or deep slate tile, go ahead and put a three tall tower of those wall blocks. It should end up looking a little something like that. Then we're gonna go all the way back around and fill in this very top layer, just connecting them all together. Lovely. And now, once we got all that layered up, we can go over to our balcony door and our front door and make this little shell going all the way around where the door will go. Just like that. Now, we're all done with the walls. We can go ahead and take some glass panes or glass blocks if you prefer, and just go ahead and fill in all of the windows that are left. With the windows now put in, all you should have left in the walls are these openings for the door. So go ahead and grab a pressure plate that matches the wood of the floor and place that in the little door frame there. Do the same for both doors. Then with your door, stand on a pressure plate and face either the left or the right side of the block in front, whichever way you want the door to swing open. In this case, I want my door to swing out and to the left. Otherwise, you can place it on the right and it'll swing out to the right, but I like the left, so I'm going to go over there and then whenever you go inside, it'll close. I like to put the pressure plates right there because then I can run outside without opening the door and it closes automatically automatically behind me. Plus, having the door on the outside gives that little bit extra depth, so when I open up the door, I can run inside, and it also closes behind me. Then do the same with your other door. Bada bing, bada boom. Now we're almost done with the inside. Let's light it up just a little bit. Keep this place safe. For the ceiling, I'm gonna go ahead and use spruce slabs here. You can use whatever kind of ceiling block that you would like. And on the top half of this top block on your wall, go ahead and just place in a whole row of all of these until you fill in the entire ceiling. I'm gonna make my way outside and build a little dirt staircase. You can use scaffolding if you've got it. We just wanna make our way to the roof. Now that we're up on the roof, things are gonna get a little bit tricky, but don't worry, you've got this. We're gonna start off on this front face of the house, go to the very edge, holding a dark oak stair you can shift or crouch and place one going straight up like that and then another stair on top of that deep slate tile now carefully going out to the right we're gonna do six blocks one two three four five six and on that seventh we're gonna turn 90 degrees go against this tile real nice and tight and turn it out 90 degrees that way next to this curved stair here we're gonna go to the back side and put an upside down stair facing opposite away from it it should look a little something like that from the front side going back out to the front side over here go ahead and extend this front stair out by one come backwards place an upside down stair and then place another stair going forward like that go ahead and continue this pattern going up till we have five upward stairs like this but should end up looking a little something like this we've got one two three four and five and this entire thing is two blocks deep do the same thing on the left side so that it comes up and meets it right in the middle leaving a little one block gap go ahead and leave that clear for now we'll fill that in soon next up we're going to take this same little a-frame design and put it back on this other left side right over here just like that again remember make sure this is overhanging by one block coming back around to our front door we're going to take this right column and make another one of those little upward slants off of it just like that again five staircases up that's one two three four and five now we're going to come back over to this little weird corner we made and then stand on top face the front door and put another staircase facing inwards and on top of the deep slate tile then go ahead and continue that up the normal five just like we did everywhere else so if it's all lined up correctly you should have that little one block gap in the middle while they're both facing each other at the exact same height moving on to our dark oak slabs we're going to make a little point on all three of these little peaks and then connect them all together climb up to the top of one of these peaks and then place on the bottom half of that stair a slab slab and slab so you should have three slabs tall with it sticking up by just a half slab like that go ahead and do the same thing on the front and that'll leave you with this nice little A-frame shape. Now with all three of those peaks filled in, go above the front door, stand on top of that peak, and just go ahead and do only the top layer of slab all the way across to the opposite end of the house. 
should look a little something like that. Go ahead and go over to the peak on the very front face of the house over here. And again, only using this top layer, we're gonna make a little path connecting out to the beam that we just made, just like that. Now, before we fill in the rest of this roof, we're gonna do two things. First thing, we're gonna take our cherry planks, go up to these little A-frame sections, Find the upside down dark oak stair just like you see right here and place a cherry plank in front or whatever you used as your walls for the outside. Do that on all of them and then fill them in just like you see me doing right here. You should essentially just have a little layer of seven across the bottom, five in the middle, and three up top. If we go back out to the outside, you're gonna see why we did that. It just kind of covers it in, makes it look a little bit nicer over here. Now with all three of those done, go ahead and grab your torches again. This is the second thing we want to do. Make sure this place is all lit up so that no creepy monsters come and attack us because this area will get very dark very soon. With all that done, we can go ahead and take our dark oak stairs and fill in the rest of this roof layer by layer. Now, sometimes these little inside corner sections are a little bit tricky. So for starters, I'm gonna come out to this front edge of the house come back out to the roof again and then place all the stairs in and once you get to this corner it'll naturally pull it in to that little 90 degree bend going back to the front we're going to do that same exact thing going all the way across from left to right and you'll see again when we get to that very last one it'll automatically bend itself right back in and we'll just keep on doing that this time we have to do a little bit more in but you just line it up where those two side sections meet and you should have a nice lovely little corner if you're going across and getting these weird stairs that look something like this that just means you're going a little bit too far so go a little bit closer to the stair a little bit more to the left place it right up against it you see if you go right up against it you get exactly what you want there's the first corner of the house all done now we're going to move over to the balcony side go over here we're going to go in front of all the deep slate tile and when you get into the corner just go ahead and turn and keep going to the rest until you get to that other peak just like that and just go ahead and continue wrapping it all the way around until you get it all closed up and again when you come to these little corners go ahead and just do that one little extra and then turn that 90 degrees and it'll automatically bend your stair for you stairs can be tricky sometimes but now that we have both those 90 degree sections in we can go back to the back side and just fill in this last little piece and we'll be all set to go and now with that done we are almost finished grab that dark oak fence again and go ahead and outline the layer on the balcony and the layer on the front porch right over here. Just follow along the deep slate tile that you already have and then you should be all good to go. Your balcony section should look a little something like this and your front porch deck should look a little something like this. Now I sometimes like to put a couple torches just surrounding my door there that way I get a nice little bit of even lighting. Makes everything just a little less scary. With your dark oak fencing still in hand, go ahead and jump down to the bottom layer here and go ahead and connect all of your deep slate pillars surrounding the perimeter of your home. And with every one of these seven wide sections, I'll go ahead and grab a dark oak fence gate and put it in the middle. Now this next part is optional, but I do like to have a little bit of fencing running across right behind that staircase right here. Now you can do whatever you'd like with this space down below, but personally I like to use it for crop farming. The easiest way I've found to do that is to put one water source in the center of these four little square sections right here. So we're gonna go over to these fence gates, find the center, punch that out, and place a dark oak slab on the top half of this block here. You can waterlog that slab and now this whole section will be hydrated. Once you've got all four of those slabs waterlogged, you can go ahead and till out one, two, three on each end of this block here. Then just fill in the rest of this little square, should be a little seven by seven square, like you see here. We're gonna go ahead and do that three more times. After you've got all this farmland tilled out and hydrated, go ahead and put some torches on top of these slabs. These slabs can be any sort of slab. I just like the dark oak because it kind of blends into this cropland a little bit better. Also, if you want to fill in this other row with more cropland, technically you can. I just like to have it to kind of differentiate my different crops. You could put another little section of cropland right here, but I like to use this for storage and keep all my crops and seeds organized all together. On that same note of storage, you can also turn this little roof attic space into a storage spot if you put a ladder going up right here. Works out pretty well to get up to the attic area and then you can put all sorts of different chests up in here or you can do anything with it really but that is everything with this house if you follow it along you should have a little something that looks like this if you want to see me making this in my survival world you can check out my episode one i'll link that above right now you can check that out and if you make any kind of modifications to this design i'd love to see it i just thought this was a fun way to kind of implement some cherry wood and mangrove wood since those are two block types i've never used in the past i really hope that this video has been helpful for you if it has please leave a like down below and consider subscribing subscribing if you're not already, and come check out all the shenanigans we get up to on my main series episodes. Anyway, with that, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.